All right, hello, folks. Tonight we are talking about a wine uh, style called Cabernet <laughs> Cabernet Sauvignon. Sorry, um, you know, I mean Sauvignon Cabernet. <laughs> Sauvignon Cabernet. <laughs> On uh, James is telling us this is the. I don't remember that French guy that the waiter that used to go like. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, I can't do that. I hurt my teeth. What from the Odd Couple? You know. Oh yeah. Like, Fandango Friday. I was waiting for you to say that. Um, Fandango Friday. I guess I'm feeling not the best today. But um, seven lucky bells for the evil spirits. I'm gonna try to, yeah, I'm gonna try to. Ed Norton, Thelma, the Thelma Bell. Oh, oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, Ed Norton. Ears. Well, we have a a, a special uh, guest celebrity. Um, he is uh, from the um, the former old classic. Uh, TV show comedy called The Adams Family. It is Thing, and and Thing has uh, some comments for the people who do not appreciate the free form format of Fandango Friday. And here is Thing. Hey Thing, great to have you on the show. Now, what if you have? What do you have to say for all these jabronis that don't like what we do on Fandango Friday? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, 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 man! Don't do it! 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 He needs to behave. That thing, he's bad. He's, no, he's out of control. Thing is out of control. You know what? Go back in, in the, in the uh, Fandango Friday uh, celebrity dressing room. Here, go back. Go back. Why this show got canceled? Why Adam's family got canceled? All right. Now, well, <coughs> well, 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 how about that? Um, I have Liber Liberty Creek Sub Cabernet Seven. Y'all get it right. Um, and I'll tell you real fast about this, um, since I'm furthest west tonight. It is um, apparently leaking. I must have spilled some. It's 12% uh, alcohol, and it is from California, and it was $6.92 for the bottle. So now the next person east of me is Jean-Pierre, so he's going to tell us about his wine that yeah. you bought at Walmart today. Yes, Oak Leaf Cabernet. This is the exclusive uh, wine brand for Walmart. Walmart has a couple of other exclusive brands. They have the uh, Lucky Dog or Lucky Duck, whatever that is. And also they have a new, and also Whispering Hills. Um, and they have another brand um, that they have that I started to see recently. And Jay, I don't know if you've seen it, called Salvari. Uh, Australian wine. It goes for three ninety six, and it's and um, and it's from some vineyard out in Australia. But right now, all of their wines that I've seen have been available at Walmart. Um, but yeah, this one here, this box wine. Of course, they also sell it in bottles. Um, it's four bottles of the seven hundred fifty milliliter inside this box. Um, it costs ten dollars and seventy three cents in change. <coughs> so that's a pretty good buy. And I'm going to be sipping on this pretty much throughout the weekend. Um, uh, but um, a very good wine, very enjoyable Cabernet. Uh, the the, the 1.5 liter uh, costs about $5.96 uh, for, uh, for, for five eighty six. excuse me, for, for the bottle. And wow. um, very inexpensive Cabernet, very good, very tasty. Um, that's what I got tonight. Hey, if you like it, that's what counts, right? Yep. And help now, in the pocketbook here. too. What? And it helps in the pocketbook. Right. Right. And to to the snobs, uh, I'll have to get Thing again if you're again, if you're a wine snob. But I think Thing is taking a nap. Okay. I'm good. He's a weird thing. He's such a weird thing. Hey, uh, Ronnie, what do you have a wine tonight? Of course. Okay. Tell us about this. All right, it's the original Dark Horse Cabernet Sauvignon. 
Sauvignon. 2017 California. It's uh, 13.5 ABV. And I bought it at 7 Eleven for $9.99. And it's no horseplay either. This is real. It's a, uh, what is it? A seven. I think it's a 750 milliliter bottle. Oh, no, what happened with you? Yep. Red wine contain, contains sulfites. Contains sulfites, right? Yep. Dark horse, dark horse. That makes me think of George Harrison. Now, now, now. <laughs> James P. Madonna is going to tell us about his wine that he bought up there in New Jersey. In okay. Hot, now, in hot state of New Jersey today. Uh, please. Well, knock on wood, I got the 10,000 BTUs blasting. All right. Now, I didn't choose this because I could have choose one of the more inexpensive Cabernet Sauvignons, but I chose this because of uh, how interesting the label was and the name of the company. And uh, it cost with tax $17, but that's okay. It was befitting for the show. All right. This is called... Uh, Gentlemen's collection, even though I don't know how much of a gentleman we are on Fandango Friday. Yeah, keep away from that. Collection. Oh, yeah, I know about Lindemans. Yeah, see the old geezer on there? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen better. Lindemans wine in, in, in my area. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he's, you know, he's better than the Quaker Oats, dude, that's for sure. Doctor. I have, I have a Linde Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead, talk. I was going to say, I have a Lindemans wine that I bought. The other day, it's called a Shiraz. We could do that one day. Uh, oh, they have, yeah. That's yeah. the one they have most. All of their wines have a twist-off cap on those. Uh huh. I have well, right unfortunately, unfortunately, this had a, this had not the synthetic cork that you see now. It had a real cork, and I I didn't. I was preoccupied, and I didn't cut the wrapper off, and it broke, and it snapped my my wine my uh, cork. Uh, extractor it snapped it so I had to take a knife and pry it and I had to push the second half of the cork with the <laughs> screw in it into the bottle I, I had no choice you know uh, it's always something trying to sabotage me some some evil yeah. spirit but yeah, anyway it's gonna be gonna be complex yeah I know I never have an issue with the with the synthetic um, corks which are great never but the but natural cork it you know it chips and it, yeah, yeah, things of that nature. I'm surprised that this corkscrew of the steel, you know, the ones with the arms that go up, you go, yeah, one, one, uh, one of these things, yeah, my, it snapped, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the screw snapped and got embedded into the cork, the real cork. Okay, Dr. Henry John uh, Lindemann's uh, since uh, 1843. Uh, when gentlemen knew how to behave, yeah, right. Yeah, except behind closed doors uh, and playing poker in the saloon. Gentlemen's collection, 2015 Cabernet Sauvignon, batch number one, a guide to chivalry and integrity. Oh, oh, oh. rule number one, language, please. Yeah, you hear that thing? Like it says here, it's right, it says. Language, please. Maybe you should give uh, some of that wine to the thing, and he might. Come yeah, around. I should. Yeah. How but, much? How much was for the bottle, uh, James? Was uh, with tax was seventeen bucks. Uh, let me see. Um, Is that uh, the average price for wines up there? No, I, I could have gotten the Yellowtail uh, Cabernet a lot cheaper. I mean, there there were there was a whole array of of uh, domestic Cabernets. They do sell Liberty Creek up in Jersey, right? Yeah. Now, okay. I took a video that I showed uh, Mr. Tirio privately of some very expensive Cabernet Sauvignons that were like oh. a, few hundred, a few hundred bucks. Two ninety nine. <laughs> yeah. Which I'm yeah, no, probably no, no, not no. that good. I saw one today that was three dollars and fifty cents. Oh, that, at, that's a, at, wow. at the uh, at the Dollar General. That's like like a Thunderbird or, or no, no. Or I, I think it's called uh, Ronnie. Is it called Spring Creek? I don't know. I didn't. I didn't really look at the what the label. Yeah. Is. If it's if it is that price is Spring Creek. That's that's the brand that's uh, sold at Dollar General. Oh. Okay. Um, uh, they I have that. They have a Sweet Red. They have a Cabernet and a Merlot. Is it good? I I bought them a few times. It's okay, but yeah, I'm not. 
I'd rather I'd rather get this more bang for my buck with this one than, than the one from the, uh, Dollar General. But, uh, That's just me talking. 13.9% 13, 13 alcohol by volume, Napa Valley, California. And uh, he goes on and on. He's very long winded, this guy. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Gentlemen, can make rah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And, uh, you know, I just, I'm bypassing all the jumbo. Uh, um, uh, but it gives you a little bit of the history of. Uh, of Henry J. Linneman, and, um, and that's it. That's it. Uh, you know, without without boring people with the history of this geezer, he definitely has a story behind him. And, you know, those that are interested can read about it online. But uh, yeah, so that's it. That's it. Interesting label for Fandango Friday, and um, yeah. I like the flavor. Uh, I, uh, I had a problem with uh, gave me a 1983 bottle of wild turkey. It had been aged in 1975, and it, it was bottled in 1983. And I opened it. Really making a problem. Wild so, turkey yeah. is no joke, man. I've, I've had bad experience with wild turkey. It's a it's a wind tunnel. Yeah, so I got that the wild turkey and I was so excited. I said, Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> so I went to um it had a like a cap where you you could just it had uh ribbed where you give you some surface area to grab and you're supposed to pull a cork out, but the cork was so dry rotted, it just came right off. It Fell broke inside. off. And, yeah. So I had to strain it through a strainer. And somebody was saying online, they said, Well, what you do with that? Before you ever try to take it off, is you put water on it and let it soak that water up for like a day, and then it'll get like strong. I don't know if that's really true. Seems like once it's rotted, it's not going to stay together. But I was able to save the bourbon. I was able to save the bourbon mostly, but it did have little flecks of cork sometimes. So I was so disgusted by that. Now you have a screw off cap that just continued to unravel as you screwed it off until there was nothing. No. You know, like there's a little piece of metal that hangs, and then this one just went around, around, no, around. I can believe that. What happened now? The, uh, the, the, uh, the, the old granddad, no, the old crow, <laughs> the 1977 bottle of old crow that had been aged eight years. Cool. That cap was just a screw cap, so it came right off. So I was happy with that. Um, but anyway, uh, well, so I, we saved, the, I saved the synthetic corks on purpose, and that's a good thing I did. Is the I, old crow comparable to the wild turkey? Old crows? Maybe I would. Okay, hold on a second. For two things. James, you're right. Those corks can come in handy when you need them. Secondly, the old crow is not... Well, yeah, that one was comparable to wild turkey because the old crow was 100 proof. That was They don't make it anymore. It's called old, Pro, old crow bottled in bond. And it was 100 proof. And then wild turkey is 101. It's only, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, a little bit higher. So, um, yeah. And and uh, wild turkey was aged eight years. And that old crow was aged eight years. But now nah, you don't get that anymore. So it's that's the past. I, ha I had a real bad experience with wild turkey when I was about 20 years old. And I never tried it again. After that. What's wrong? It was, it was spoiled? No, I got too drunk. Just. I wasn't drinking responsibly, yeah. <laughs> I, I've seen young people like like puke right in the urinal, and that was disgusting. And then they yeah. came right back and did the same thing the following week. Oh, no, that, I did it one, I tried it one time, and I never tried it ever again. Good. Yeah, that, that kind of, that kind of, uh, that kind of high living never appealed to me. When I was in high school, a lot of guys and girls say, yeah, yeah, we're having a party. And I was like, mm. No thanks. You know, I didn't care. They could do what they wanted, but I, I just, I don't like well, it. Well, you're a deep thinker. You're 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 not like that. You're not you're not uh, shallow and petty like the average. Uh, I don't know. I guess I, would, I guess. Uh, well, you I'm didn't not, start drinking until you were like older, right? Like thirty or something. I didn't really start drinking regularly. Let's see. In '94, I started drinking occasionally wine. 
but it wasn't like a big habit. Then uh, two years later in February 96, I said, well, what is this whole excitement about beer? Let me see, because people are always going on about it forever. And I grew up with it, but I never drank it. So uh, I went and bought some beer in February 96. And I... Well, and so, I, so Jay, never, never in your time growing up, you never like sip and go down in your dad's you know, stash and took a sip of beer or, or wine or whatever, you know, like I did you know, when, when I, I was what well, No, when I turned 18, um, well, before I turned 18, you know, like, oh, uh, no, no, I never had any interest in that. <laughs> My insurance broke and told me when I turned 18. James, we have to make a man out of you. I'm going to take you to Plato's Retreat in the city. We're going to, I'm going to take you to Swingers Club. We're going to really? take you to And he did. Are you serious? You went to Plato's Retreat? Wow. Yeah, he's, 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 yeah. What? No, so we, I would do different things like check uh, <laughs> out a book in the library about the history of GM cars and just read that. But anyway, uh, so I heard about Plato's retreat. Now, Joe, I'm gonna let you talk that. first because that wind is driving you buggy. So I'm gonna let you talk first. Sound like a wind tunnel. Yeah, it is. I'm sorry about that, guys. Looks like the rain's about to come, so I'm going to be real quick with my wine. 12.5% uh, ABV. Again, as I mentioned, the wine is exclusively sold at Walmart. You have the Cabernet, you have the Merlot, you have the Shiraz, the Syrah, the Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio, Moscato. Uh, uh, they don't do a Pinot Noir, which is kind of surprising from uh, looking at the website. Uh, but anyway, I uh, bought this box of very inexpensive wine. I'm sure we'll stick their nose up at it, but uh, drinking this right now, I'm on my uh, third glass. Um, nice. I'm getting hit. Yeah, I'm getting a hit of very you know, some blackberries in this wine, more raspberries than blackberries, and, but it does have that toasty oak finish that I'm getting when it goes down. I'm tasting it. I'm tasting it. I'm sensing it immediately on it. But overall, it's a very good, inexpensive wine. You know the. I looked on the website and I did some information and these this wine did win some awards surprisingly, um, but again, uh, not much information if you go about Oak Leaf. You know, um, it is part of the I believe it's part of the Gallo family. I, I could be wrong. Um, no, uh, I don't think it is. It's not part of the Gallo family wines. Okay. So, no. okay. Um, Probably the same people that do the Glen Ellen wines and whatnot. Um, because see, where's the location right now? It says uh, Bottle at Oakley Vineyards, Rupon, California. So it must be the same people that do the flip the flip flop wines or the um, uh, the Glen Ellen or maybe the Foxhorn. I'm I'm not sure. One one or the other. These big conglomerates that that put out these inexpensive discount wines. Yeah, I think it might be handled by WineX, Wine Exchange, Winery Exchange. Okay. Yeah, but Wine Exchange, that. yeah. So also, they involve in beer and hearts and spirits, too. Am yeah. I correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They're the ones that brought us that lovely uh, all greens beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never had yeah. Big Flats. Oh, yeah. Good old Big Flats, yeah. I Remember, know. it's the water. It's the water that makes the beer. Yeah, well... Not that beer. Hey, well, uh, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna go on, and uh, you can hang around if you want to get kind of early. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'll stay with you guys. I'm about to get out of this. Uh, looks like the rain's about to come right now, so I'm gonna jump in the car. I'm not that far from my house, so you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that hey, far hey, from home. I'm just I'm just two blocks away. That's why I'm at this lo location. Like I said. On location. Think, think goes I'm not far from the house. Hey, uh, well, cut, cut yes, folks, so don't drink and drive. Don't don't do that. That that's wrong. You see my fingers? That is wrong. Don't do that. No, <laughs> all right. Uh, so mute it. Mute it for me. All right. I, I'll mute. I'll go. Okay. You can still watch. So Jean's segment was sponsored by Bad Idea Jeans, <laughs> and um, now. I'm glad he had a cool, refreshing breeze. 
Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. That 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 was as loud as us. That was loud as a sound that was loud. Now, um, I don't really like this t type of wine, but I have been enjoying drinking the bottle. Now, I'm not gonna lie, but uh, I really like more like rosé wines, like lighter stuff, because maybe I'm weak. Okay, I'll admit it. But so, why did you decide this um, theme for today then? Uh, well, <clears throat> I saw it and I figured I'd try it, right? Instead of just saying, oh, well, I don't like that, you know, I, I said, well, uh, let me give it a chance. You know, maybe it will make me start to appreciate the style a little better. And it did. So uh, I just find that Cabernet Sauvignon is a little too meaty and beefy and chewy, like mm -hmm. sort of like you're eating it more than drinking it. But um, it tastes to me like uh, like any other red wine would taste. Yeah. It's got I'm a not much of a wine person, though. Yeah, I drink some every day. That as my juice. That's my oh, really? juice. Yeah, I don't really like fruit juice. They say you should drink fruit juice, but it's like I don't really like fruit juice. So, but wine appeals to me for whatever reason. Now, I don't drink this much every day. Like I'll just drink like about three ounces, you know, and uh, that seems to suit me. Other people might drink more. Um, this one here is like I said, a little meaty in the flavor and those. The you get the dark kind of robust grapes, grape skins in the nose and in the flavor, there's a little velvetiness in the body. I will read all the comments, folks. <clears throat> Goes down nice. I was feeling bad. It, it seems like it's making my stomach feel better. I know oh, in the Bible, that's good. Yeah, in the Bible it talks about uh, the Apostle Paul said, drink a little wine for your stomach problem. Um, that was just advice that St. Paul gave to uh, Timothy, I think. But um, probably That's how they guzzle during those, you know, all those Bible movies. You know, they they guzzle wine just like pirates guzzle rum. Yeah, but he didn't. He didn't say guzzle it for your stomach problem. He said take a little bit of it. <laughs> but um, but um, and then of course Jesus turned water into wine, and I was curious. I wonder what kind of wine he he created. You know. <laughs> That's another Bible story, but um, That's a good question. No, I know it was high quality because they were bragging on it at the re wedding reception. They were saying, "Whoa, what is this?" It was supposed to be better than the wine they usually had. Right? Yeah, it was kind. It's kind of a comical story in a way. It's his first miracle. That's recorded at least, and um, they said, "Wait, this is." They said, "Usually the host will." serve the best expensive wine at the beginning of the party. And then as people are drinking for hours yeah. and hours, then they'll substitute the cheapo stuff because right. they're so well into it, they won't notice. They said, right. but this, this guy, he saved the best wine till last and they couldn't get over that, you know? But of course, hey, wine if not you, provided by the host, huh? True story, Richard Nixon used to do that. He, he would uh, serve his guests all the cheap stuff, but he was uh, keep the good stuff like Don Rothschild, seventy whatever it was. He kept that good stuff, but the cheap stuff he would serve his guests that came, you know, during these state dinners, and they couldn't tell the difference, you know. <laughs> so that's funny. Uh, well, if you ever read uh, the book, if you if you read the book, all the the presidents and what they like to drink, you know, with the exception of George W. Bush, you know, he was not a drinker, but everybody else. You know, drank rye day. whiskey and they drank wine. They drank beer and you know martinis and all that stuff. You know, and of it, course the of course the current president doesn't drink anything either. So that's true too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He didn't, say he didn't like to drink. George um, Bush had a, like um, a drinking problem. When he, he was, was younger, younger, and then he was recovering. And then Trump, I think he never got into drinking because his brother died of a. Uh, alcohol alcohol related. Uh, two part two parts vodka, one part dry vermouth. And uh, some olives, and right, and that's about it. Shake it, not stir. Oh, what's that, James Bond? The martini, vodka martini. Oh, martini yeah. Two parts vodka, one one part dry vermouth. Okay, so uh, um, y'all, two guys, do you enjoy the one you're drinking? The, you got anything in special to tell us about it? Well, yeah, this I told one. You, I think. Is, I think. Okay. Well, go ahead. Go ahead, James. Uh, no, this uh, gentleman's collection is a, a semi-dry red wine. Uh, like uh, Ronnie said, it's really hard to tell the difference between 
many of the popular red wines, even though my favorite is still Shiraz and, and Pinot Noir, but uh, it, it, it's, it, it has some fruitiness to it. And uh, um, the flavor of being uh, fermented in, in a wooden barrel, I, I do get that uh, slightly, but I, I would say a, a semi-dry, uh, partially fruity, uh, um, more dry than fruity, I would say. But um, I've had Cabernet before, but comparing this to the cheapest Cabernets domestically made, I don't really see a difference. Uh, no, you know what? Scratch that because I I like the the cheaper version happens to be Australian, which is Yellowtail. Yellowtail Cabernet is um, <clears throat> every bit as good as this one. So you would just go with the cheaper option because you find it's not a, any kind of difference, really. Yeah, I mean, you know, aside from the uh, fascinating label and the man's mug in the front. I mean, I, I like the yellow tail at least just as much. But then again, I would go for a Pinot Noir or a Shiraz as far as the uh, red wines go. And uh, also I liked, even though it had a screw on top, Carlo Rossi's Burgundy. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I like it better than Paisano because it was darker, deeper, you know, more robust. Um, and uh, also that... The one we did that was real fruity like sangria the uh, uh the white zinfandel was was very refreshing ice oh, yeah. uh oh by the way that japanese plum wine i've been drinking from from what i got last sunday um is excellent you know uh, some of them were white wines flavored with plum it this just was, wanted this was plum this was plum wine um you know, and uh, yeah, I got it in the refrigerator. It, it, it does taste better there. So uh, it's it's not, it's, plum wine. It, yeah, it's plum wine. It's sweet, but it? not, oh, it's not overly sweet. You can taste that it's made from from plums, that it's not just sugar down. Okay. It's just a type of wine that's popular in Japan, plum wine. Yeah, like sake, you know, rice wines are popular in Asia, China. Uh, I got these. Yeah, and I got these. I got this Japanese plum tree behind my house, and I got those huge ones over there. I'm curious. To, I wonder what wine would taste like made with those fruits. Hmm, Japanese plums. Huh. What about it? Could they make wine from southern persimmons? Oh no! I guess you could make it from anything. You know, pom pomegranate wine. Yeah, sure. They made blueberry wine here in South Jersey. You know, and cranberry wine uh, by the same company. Yeah, and up in Zano, I think Valenzano uh, wineries. Yeah, north of here, north of here, they make strawberry wine because it's a big strawberry growing area. Okay, well, Ronnie, what do you think about yours? You favorable towards it? Um, Got any special comments about it? Like I told you, I think it, I don't, I don't really differentiate it between um, this and any other red wine. And um, red wine is not my favorite, really. Uh, I find it kind of. Um, a little too sweet. Yeah. Uh, it, it leaves a a taste on your tongue a little bit. Yeah. Like, uh, and, and it discolors your teeth. It discolors your tongue. <laughs> now, uh, once you once you start drinking, I don't mind sipping on it. So it's good. Color. Can't, it's color. I can't say. Yeah, that's true. That is true. I can't say that I, I can differentiate this between any other red wine. I'm curious if you can, Ron. What's, what makes this style of wine different than, than any other red wine? Well, to me, some people say it had, it had a strange... Some I was reading about this Cab Sav style. Some people say it has like a bell pepper flavor. And I guess it does have a vegetable... As it warms and it sets in the glass, it does have sort of a vegetable aroma. Now, are you supposed to have this um, cold or warm? What is I did mine warm, you know, but some most I guess most people would get it cold. But I, I, I like to drink these red wines warm myself. Uh, okay, I bought mine warm um, earlier today, and then I had it in the fridge for about three hours. 
Now, the Shiraz I put in the fridge. Now, if that's not correct, I don't know. Yeah, this is room temperature. I like I like most red wines room temperature. I like the fruity wines like the uh, the white Zinfandel ice cold because it has kind of a strawberry sort of a flavor to it. I yeah, think I, I, I like I, I prefer um, white wine. Yeah, I guess I like both. Um, I'm not sure which one I like better. James, now I do pick up a little vegetable and spicy note in the nose and uh, like that chewiness and that velviness, velvetiness. Now, James, do you prefer what you're drinking tonight or would you rather have the Carlo Rossi Burgundy? Partial, partially what Ronnie said about about them coming very close where it's not easy to differentiate, but I would have to say Carlo Rossi Burgundy is a deeper, more robust red wine. I would choose the Carlo Rossi Burgundy um, and, of course, the Taylor Port over there. Oh, the, the, port, the port wines are good. I do like yeah, those. I, yeah, also the, uh, the, um, any of the inexpensive um, quality Shirazes. And, uh, now, the Pinot, the Pinot Noir grape, from what I understand, is popular in champagne making. Uh, I read this one long article about champagne before uh, New Year's Eve. And they mentioned the Pinot Noir grape, but then again, I've, I've had Pinot Noir um, or Pinot Noir, however you pronounce it, wine. But like Ronnie says, there's, there's so many similarities to them. Um, I think Burgundy is like one of the deepest and most robust of the red wines as far, you know, without without adding things to it. I, I know the ports and the sherries, you know, they, they Mr. Terrio has proven they add things to it, like like yeah. brandy. Brandy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I I'd say, even though it comes in a gown with a screw top, it's not some hoity-toity wine. Uh, yeah, I'd take the Carlo Rossi Burgundy uh, over this, but um, maybe there's people out there that know things about Cabernet that. I don't know. It's got to be somebody, right? It's got to be some, you know. All right. Well, well, I'm going to read the comments. And, and the next time we get together, which I don't know when that will be exactly. but uh, Next Friday. Maybe. Or I would say probably. But well, I can't. Fandango Friday is not an official thing every week. It's, uh, it's official, but I can't do it every week. Well, we, we banged out a few of them, I think, so far. Yeah. Not counting the one that went start raving mad. The I'm original. talking about the, 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 the that was that was just the pilot. The boy that was the debut. <laughs> that was the debut. Hey, thing. No, no, no. You that can't. Was, uh, that was uh, different. <laughs> but little anyway, yeah. little little unexpected. <laughs> but um, different. It got a lot of interest. Um, but um, but I would say. I could do it on many Fridays, but not everyone know because some Fridays I work at Bingo. I'm going to be selling a eighth game special and letter X. And well, if you if you're if you're um, if it's a little bit of a challenge to come up with another theme, we can go free form and wh whatever people bring. They can bring have strippers in here. Oh, no, not that free form, but well, if you want. If you have any show. Now, uh, you see, the theme is not the issue. It's just the availability. You know, I just, some Fridays I'm not going to be around to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like I have what, I still have white rum, the 12 cane, right? I still have um, patties. Uh, no, I'm giving away what I have. Patties, oh, Irish. Run. Yeah, the cane run. Right, cane run, and I have the patties. P-A-D-D-Y, Irish whiskey. That's what I have left. But then again, the place I go has a whole array of little bottles. Well, I was asking Ron um, if we could do like a summer beer thing. So do that you, is, do you like is, beer, uh, James? He does. Summer beer, to me, yeah. uh, the best summer beer I ever had is the wheat beers. The yeah, I, I love wheat beers. I, I had one that, that, that Mr. Terrio said was one of the best he ever had. Uh, 
and it was very complex. It was, what is it, Artisimus or Ar Artemis or? Oh, Aventinus. Aventinus, I knew it was an exotic name, Aventinus. So uh, what if we do that theme next Friday? How does that sound? Summer beers? Summer beers. Sound like a good idea, really. Like I could bring up. I mean, everybody's going through this heat right now. Yeah. It's, it's hot out. Why not grab a refreshing summer beer? Yeah, yeah. I could bring a beat to strawberry lager. It's like the straw. It's like Slivy Newton John during the uh, the musical uh, Breeze. Was it Summer Breeze or Summer Beers? She was singing Summer yeah, yeah, Beers. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the. Summer Breeze. Uh, there's <laughs> hey, a there summer he place. Is. That's John. There's a summer place. Um, what was it the the Letterman? There's a summer place, you know, Sandra D, right? Or oh, is that the wrong movie? I, I don't know you're losing me, John. <laughs> okay. Yes, I like I like movies with Sandra D in it. David Letterman? Yeah. <laughs> the Letterman's, the Letterman's. Oh, uh, oh whoever that, that group from the fifties. Uh, I was gonna say we need uh Larry Bud Melman to um meet people at the uh Port, Port Authority bus station in there. Give him yeah. a house. <laughs> hey, who's saying blue moon, Mr. Terrio? All right, ball, ball, ball. let me let me get my score before I wrap it up, guys. Uh, right. My score, right. I'm gonna shut it off. I'm about to get some rain. Um, I give my wine a for the style and for the value. It will be an A minus, B plus, A minus for me. It's a good value if you get it. Um, I know it's sold at Walmart. I know people have their views about Walmart. And anything that they put out or anything that they might have exclusivity with. But uh, I think the quality of the wine is pretty good. And um, okay, Jay, well, I know you've done some reviews with Oak Leaf and Whispering uh, Hills. Yeah. Um, I, I think they're I think they're good wines. And the price is very reasonable. If you get the uh, 70, 50 milliliter bottle, you're paying three bucks. Or the uh, 1.5 milliliter, you're paying, what, $6. It's a good, affordable, decent wines, and just because you pay two hundred dollars for a bottle of wine, or fifty or more, whatever, sometimes the quality may not be that good. So I just, just remember that. I wouldn't know, but I'd be curious to find yeah, out. Yeah, I wouldn't know either. But I never only the most I'll ever pay for a bottle of wine. My limit is fifteen, and yeah. after that, everything's going down. But if somebody else is treating, I'd try to two hundred dollars. Sure, I'd try to five hundred dollars. Somebody else is paying. Yeah. Yeah, just and give I'll me the money. I'll, I'll buy it. Thousand dollar one. Yeah, why not? Heck, hey, well, uh, hey, even places like Italy. I mean, they do budget wines. I mean, they have wines where where the you know the working person in Italy or whatever. I'm sure oh, they could get yeah. to buy wine. Oh yeah, oh yeah. My friend went to Portugal. Him and his wife, and they said they were drinking wine like mad over there, and it was so cheap they were just pouring it. You know, um, exactly. Oh, by the way, I've had homemade wine made by an old Italian dude off the boat. And it knocked me on my ass. It was like pulpy, heavy. Do it. Carlo Rossi looked like uh, like fruit juice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was heavy duty wine. I, I, oh man. It, I mean, you know, Jay would have loved it. It was like really full bodied, and uh, you know, it was filled. I, I gotta say, wine it'll it'll hit the spot way quicker than beers, though. Yeah, and, and and that's always been my battle. Every time I go shopping for something, I want a, a little beverage to relax. You know, should I buy a bottle of wine or should I get me a, a 20, 15 pack or a 24 pack of beer? You know, so uh, yeah. that's my, always been my debate when I go when I go out shopping. But, uh, I bought but a, you know, whatever to, 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 to each his own, as they say. Right. I bought a 15 oh, pack. So, of, so you should. Sorry. You, go ahead, man. I bought a 15 pack of natural light yesterday for seven ninety nine. Oh, I uh, I bought a fifteen pack of um, Keystone Ices the other day for for seven ninety five. I was gonna, do that, but I waited too long and the sale was off, so I bought the light. But I enjoyed it. But what were you guys? A good beer. I was gonna ask John. What people say, um, and so it's won it's, awards too. Keystone yeah. Ice has won awards. Yeah, yes, no, it's, it's a good beer. I, 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 really, I really like Keystone Ice. Oh, that's right. You posted a photo. What were you gonna? You posted a photo on alcohol legs. That's right. Yeah. 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 Well, we got Pennsylvania. Yeah, I was gonna ask John um, if you if you are like a regular wine drinker, you you enjoy oh, it, yeah. like you do, like you enjoy beer. He does. Yeah, I do enjoy. I do enjoy beer. You know, I do enjoy something that's reasonably priced. You know, uh, like I said, I love you know I love Genesee, and the, right now the price I'm getting the Genesee 25 ounce cans of beers now for 99 cents is a is a great great deal. 
But also sometimes I love a good bottle of wine, you know. So Oak Leaf or a Liberty Creek wine, you know, I will gravitate towards. And I'll buy and I'll sip it and hold on to it, Carl Rossi or Livingston, for a good month or two. You know, more than likely a month more so. And, you know, off to the next, you know, something just to sip on, you know. And sometimes that wine does the trick for me, you know. Are you sure Are you that good for red or white? Uh, red, red, red all the way. Red all the way. I'll, I'll have a blush. I'll have a, 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 a white wine from time to time, but give me red all the time. Uh, are you sure those are 25 ounce cans or are they 24 ounce cans? Excuse me, 24 ounce cans, sir. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> do me a favor. Now, do me a favor. Could you perhaps give me a definitive score, B plus or A minus pick? Um, for the wine, I'm, I'm going to give this a uh, A minus. All right. I'm going to get mine a B. I mean, what am I talking about? See how I'm starting to slip bad now. I'm going to get mine an A. Yeah. A. I like yeah. it a lot. And it's not even my style, but I'm starting to think that it could be. You no, know, I, I still like the blush wines more, you know, but uh, I, I like it. And uh, if I was going to drink a, a heavy duty red wine, I suppose my real preference would be the Burgundy, which is a blend, the Burgundy from like a Gallo family. The Gallo family hardy burgundy, which I can't really get. And Livingston, the, uh, Livingston Burgundy. No, Carlo Rossi Burgundy, which I can easily get. Now, Me too. Uh, now, uh, Ronnie, what would you score? And I'm gonna read comments. Um, I don't really, don't really think I'm qualified to be scoring wine at all. Oh yeah. For the for the hell of it, I'll I'll give it a, um. I'll, I'll give it a. A minus. A minus. Okay. Now James, you Madonna. I'll give it um a ninety uh ninety percent out of a hundred. What, what would that be? Uh, an A minus. Yeah, A minus. Yeah, I'll give it. I'll give it that. So, so do you guys do letter grades for wine and and the um number grades for, for beer? Oh, oh no! Oh, here I come. Here I come. Here I come, Emma. All right. I have to go. Peace out. Sorry. All right. So I'm, glad <laughs> I'm glad you didn't drink too much. Um. No, I'm home. I'm home now. So I get to behave a little bit. All right. Wink, man. wink. Yeah. Wink, <laughs> wink. Watch wink. out. Uh, be, gonna be trouble in the house. Uh, the reason why I get it minus is because it, uh, I think it's um it's 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 a tad bit underrated for its price. Whereas the Shiraz Cabernet Sauvignon, I think is just a little better at a, at a lower price tag. So that's why I gave it an A minus. You know, but the people go either way, Ronnie. They you know they'll give it a a percentage or they'll give it a, a, a letter. Uh, all right. You're saying ninety. You're saying ninety. I'll give mine a ninety three, which is just getting into the A. You know, a ninety three A. I, I think I would do that. Yes. I'll right. give mine an eighty nine. 89 B plus. Okay. And Jean was saying about the same. Well, uh, good luck to you, Jean. Now, um, <laughs> uh, let's look at the comments. Let's look at, least at the he made it home. All right. At least he made it home, but he does some things that I would not necessarily do. Okay. Right where I said I wouldn't necessarily do them. Um, here's the comment. And boy, do we have a lot? Yes, we do. Ryan Lane said, laughing my anatomy off. And then Barefoot makes a nice one. Gabe says, hi, we can't afford expensive wine. That's why cheap is the way to go. Well, a lot of people cannot afford it. Well, Drew, Gabe buys expensive beers. Huh? Gabe buys expensive beers. <laughs> why can't, that's why he can't afford their expensive wine. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce says, cheers, gentlemen. Let's hear about your drinks. Ronald, you are a riot. Terry, a the riot. Yeah. <laughs> that hearing that All right. Subject Zero says, how can you distinguish between cooking wine and drinking wine if it does not say cooking on the bottle? So well, if it doesn't say cooking, it's not technically a cooking wine, but um, it will say it in the food section, cooking wine, but don't drink it because it's got salt. It's not made for drinking. Uh, like, like Holland House, right? Yeah, Holland House or, uh, or Reese. Reese is another one. But uh, you can use regular wine to cook with. My friend David made a wine reduction sauce with that garlic for that 
he called it chicken garlapede. And boy, that came out great. And I said, boy, I said, this is some kind of good sauce. Now, um, Bumpy Road Brewery says, cheers from Bumpy Road. I did not pick up one of these wines, unfortunately. Well, that's okay. I know y'all were doing a hangout, but I didn't get a chance to watch it because I didn't have time. Brian Lane says, any cork bottle is meant to be stored on its side. Oh, so, yeah, that makes sense. That does make sense. That's uh, probably why it busted on me. Yeah. Johnny Neely says, cheers, fellas. Wish I could have joined, but I'm hitting the road this weekend. Okay, well, have a safe trip wherever you happen to be going. And Drewski Brewski said he must be in Michigan. Yeah, no. Um, Craig Swenson said that wind is unbearable. I know. <laughs> it really was. Kent Beer Review says cheers, Bumpy and all. Cheers back to you, Craig Samuels. Bumpy Ryan Lane. Huh? Bumpy and all? It means Bumpy, who was commenting, Jesse and us, I guess. All right. Us. Bumpy and all of the people. Brian Lane says, or Kansas and Dorothy. I was thinking the same thing. Gabe says, Jean is in Mobile, Alabama. Drewski Brewski says, cheers, guys. Sup, Ronnie. And then Bumpy Road says, cheers, Craig. Uh, let's see here. Let me go back a little bit. Shouldn't really be Bumpy and all. It should be Ron and all. Well, I agree. Um, cheers, Drewski. Craig Swenson says, Taylor wines are my go-to wines. Same to you, says Craig. So, Wumpy, cheers, Bud says, Drewski, Drewski. And Gabe says, I like red sweet wines better than dry wines. Joan, don't drive and use your cell phone while driving. Joan, ain't gonna, Joan is not going to listen to you. Drive tipsy, be safe is the key to safety. That is a good point. Being safe is the key to safety. At the end of this show, it's a tipsy show. No, I'm not tipsy. I would like a tipsy wine to get me to the tipsy road, says Gabriel. Well, how about that? Don't drink Keystone beer while driving. That's not the key to safety. Either. No, that's the key to trouble. Pumpy Road Brewery <laughs> says a couple of my... A couple of my favorite wines have been the cheapest. They have fruitier quality to them, in my opinion. Okay. FACP Monitoring says, I had a blood orange ale in Alaska this week. Very good flavor. The craft beers in Alaska are very good. High alcohol content, though. I've had yeah. some Alaska beers. That's interesting. Wow. Well, you well, Alaska's Alaska. probably the only place around in the U.S. that's not having a, a freaking heat wave right now. Right. But they get into the 80s sometimes in the last. Drewski Brewski says, what the heck are you doing drinking wine, Ronnie? Uh, hey, hey I'm, I'm a connoisseur. He's a I'm connoisseur. A, all types of beverages. I do love Stella Rose, red and black wine, says Gabe. Craft Beer Pour says, wine gives me heartburn. Yeah, I've heard that. That, happen, that happens sometimes. I think more so with the red wine. I've you heard that. You get the, heart, the heartburn. Drewski Brewski says, drink Jim Beam and Coors to settle down. Brand new go live. Maybe Drewski should show, settle down a little bit. Cheers, bud. Beer Chug says, summer beers makes me feel fine. You are the jasmine in my mind. Cheers, guys. The hey, thing, thing I know you, these people are getting on your nerves, but stay in the dressing room thing, okay? All right. <laughs> I did not get in my Beer Chug says, Cheers, guys. Ronald Sutton says, far, far away in the land of never, never Daegu. All right. Decision, decision, decisions. Keystone White, 15 packs, five ninety-nine. Not where I live. Uh, John Womack says, cookies. <coughs> okay. Beer Chug says, smiley face. Ronald Sutton from the home of Dean Martin, $15 a 30-pack for hams. That's not a bad price. Voltron Defender of the Universe says, hmm, do I watch this? Or the new John Birch Society video, laughing out loud. Well, <laughs> don't worry, I'm staying here a bit. I just bought some local strawberry wine. I actually visited the John Birch Society headquarters in Appleton, Wisconsin. Yeah, I know. You, you said you were you were going to join them in the. 1998. Uh, no, I was a member for five years. But I visited were, the headquarters. Yeah. They took me down in the basement. And it's incredible, like this incredible library of books. I couldn't get over it. Huh. 
And then I brought them a book, and he wanted to make copies of certain parts of the book. He What'd said, you bring? Oh, what book? Benzel's Germany, and it had a big section about the uh, Order of the Illuminati. So he said, hey, yeah, let me make some copies of that. I said, go ahead. So I saw did. some uh, YouTube videos on the John Birch uh, guys, and they, had, they have some interesting um, things that they say. Yeah, it's very interesting. And, um, it is. I, I know you said you, um, you consider them like a cult, though, right? Yeah. But we are. Uh, but they. Uh, well, we don't want to get into that, but I, I was pretty involved in it. But uh, I used to uh, I met a lot of interesting people. Uh, Voltron said I just bought some local strawberry wine. Never drink and drive because you might spill your drink, says Subject Zero. See? Oh, that's what he's worried about. <laughs> Beer truck says be to eat in Napa is a must. Voltron says they have a channel. Ooh, oh, yeah, they have a channel. I believe that. Well, until they get deep de platform for saying something people don't like. I mean, they never, I, they got, one of their posts got taken down on Facebook because they said it was hate speech. And I read it and I laughed. I said, that was a joke. And, um, it's so stupid. It wasn't anything to do with hate speech, and um, but it doesn't matter because you just it have to. Say, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't have to be hate speech. Just be speech that the platform administrators happen not to like. And and, and you know what? That's kind of free market. If they don't, if the platform itself doesn't want you to say stuff, as long as the government's not involved, but and and it's the person in charge of the platform, they can. You know, ban anybody if they want to. Yeah, that's the libertarian argument. There's some problems with that, though. However, because there was a lot of collusion between the government, and the government. Yeah, so then that's different. Then. To help create those platforms. So, if a lot of these platforms are part of U.S. government intelligence, um, let's say uh, programming, uh, then then you got to watch out for that. It's not all clean and neat like people might think. Uh, a lot of stuff is, was developed going back to the 1960s. And they, and they pressured uh, Zuckerberg to, you know, to just bend to their will, you know, with Facebook. Right. So it's not as, as clean as our libertarian people would say. Now, Voltron says they have a channel. Oh, I like grains, not grapes, says Ronald. I prefer the grain-based products, but the grape, the wines, I enjoy. I would drink a 24-ounce can of steel. Reserved for today's beer, says Gabe. Okay. And if you limit it to, to that, that should be fine. Now, uh, so let's say provisionally, and I would even say likely, probably, but I can't guarantee it, but I would say it's probable. Next Friday, we look at summer beers. All right. That sounds cool. Or would you like to make it more liberal and say summer drinks? Yeah. What would you say, James? Summer drinks. Summer, summer drinks uh, with alcohol, you know, fermented summer, drinks. Summer, yeah, summer uh, adult beverages. So no lemonade. <laughs> summer adult beverages because um, you got some people that might want to join that don't, although most people we know drink or into the beer, but uh, you might have some people that want to bring something in. The, yeah. Why? Yeah. If it's fan why, or Friday, yeah. why, 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 like, like, like if somebody has Smirnoff ice or, or one of the, you know, other non-beer refreshing uh Summer uh, delights. Yeah, summer and they might have drinks got, make me feel high. And they might, and they might have a cocktail that they make every summer when it's really hot. You know. Yes, that's uh, true. That that's is. Right. Now, every, every, everybody's welcome. Don't. Uh, it better not just be me, James, and Ron showing up. Right, and don't make me come on here and leave me here like a chump. <laughs> But we do appreciate everybody, and everybody is welcome. We don't do one of these hangouts where we have this like cohort and we exclude everybody because we're just the greatest people, and everybody else is no good and can't be part of this fantastic, wonderful thing we're doing here. Those kind of things kind of bother me a little bit because uh, it's like, nah, you're not that fabulous, really. Well, the free forum concept was kind of reminding me of Casual Friday in the Office, where you know, uh, the all all the shows are very rigid in terms of theme, you know, and uh, I, I just thought because it's on a Friday, it will be interesting to have yeah. a little, you know. Uh, it has been so far to me. Now other people may think it's 
not, but I don't agree. Um, Those people but, need Metamucil. Those people need to li lighten up. Light up, chill out, chillax. All right. Uh, well, <laughs> if you want to, if you want to join our online hangouts, you can go to. Well, this is online, but you know what I'm saying. You can go to Alcohol Eggs on Facebook if people would like to do that. You might enjoy Alcohol Eggs. If you're into music, you might enjoy Rock and Roll Club. Um, I don't know. You may not like it, but um, it's up to you. But James, are you are you in the Rock and Roll Club? He was, but he quit. Oh. No, I just I I, I liked it, but I uh, I had a hard time controlling my my two uh, music videos per day. Uh, are you what you wanted to do more? Well, I, 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 you know, like what would happen is I would find two good ones and then I would see a third one. And then I, I know I can't post the third one because then other people would throw it up to Jay's face. Hey, that guy posted three or four. You know, it's like it's like a habit. You know, it's like trying to break a habit. You know, you see, oh, wait a minute. That's a great video. Oh, there's another one. But. So it, it's yeah. self-control. It was a self-control problem. Well, you gotta, you gotta write it down and save it for the next day. Yeah, the reason I did the two per day is just to make it fair, so everybody give a have a chance to listen to it because it sometimes takes a long time to listen to all these songs. And but I mean, I'm just that's sort of like a fantasy in my mind that everybody's going to take time and listen to everybody else's songs. That has been my dedication to the group since I founded it four years ago. That I would every part. Yeah, every music post people post, I listen to it. Sometimes I regret it, but uh, do you listen to the whole song? Oh yeah, start to finish. Well, the worst part is when people post music videos that are not even applicable to rock. That gets a little trying. Like I got a few people in the group. They think they're going to turn it into a blues group, but they're wrong. Uh, they're not. And then you get some people that don't grasp concepts, you know. But generally, it's been pretty good. One guy wanted to post endless videos every day, and I said, "Well, I only do two a day." Oh, I'm quitting this tight group. I said, "Well, okay." Yeah. It's like it's like when I do progressive discussions, and a certain and, and and let's say a person wants to talk about uh, open carry gun rights, where people can walk into a restaurant, or a retail store with a with an AR-15 hooked to their attached to their belt. I could see that was going off the rails, you know, so I just know it's all a matter of time, just a matter of time when you weren't going to be able to tolerate all that stuff. Yeah, I, I said that that's beyond fanaticism. That's just not, that's just plain, plain nutso. I mean, you know, every every restaurant and retail establishment will go bankrupt in record time of, of, of due to lack of customers. Right. Well, but it's hard to reason with unreasonability. Hey. Uh, or unreasonableness. Um, so, no, the uh, two songs per day is not meant to be a hard case about it. It's a practical thing. Uh, and plus, there is already YouTube. You can get on YouTube and listen to all the songs you want all day long, right? So why would you need a group on Facebook that replicates uh, it? You don't. Yeah. That's the point. You don't. Yeah, you can make a playlist. You can make a video playlist if someone has their own YouTube channel and put it right on their YouTube channel. And yeah. Like, like, you know. Yeah, the point of Rock and Roll Club is to say, we're interested in the music, so here's a couple of songs each day that I like, and then would y'all like to listen to it? Now, you get some people, they're very self-centered, so they'll say, this song is awesome, it means so much to me, and they'll post it, and then another song. And they want everybody to listen to it, fine. But they're not about to listen to anybody else's music. No way. No hey. No way. You know. No how. They they just not gonna. It's and like a friend of mine who's obsessed with that one way street attitude. You know. Yeah, like a guy I know who's obsessed with progressive rock. You know, he's into yes and all that. I know. I everybody else I know says, "Oh, I hate that kind of rock." You know, and he's like saying, "Yeah, but they're they're talented instrumentally. They're 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 talented. But, you know, just don't grab me." It's like. Uh, you know, and he's the born one of those born again Christians, and he says, "Oh, now I only listen to Christian rock." I says, "Well, that doesn't, you know, that just doesn't do it." I like heavy metal, you know. I like it's a classic '60s rock, and uh, but I figured I figure if people are going to take time to listen to your music, 
it's only right that you would take time to listen to theirs. And I've tried to, and it has mostly worked out. Now you get some people, like I said, they're, they're like, almost like they don't grasp concepts. Like they'll say, oh, I love this band. Listen to this entire two album, two hour album. <laughs> you know, come on, man. Who's going to listen to a two hour album? I'll do it, you know, because it's on my site. Uh, it's on my group and I, I'll listen to it. And I say, that's pretty good. And I say, I don't mind you posting the entire album, but here's the one problem. You have to say that you're going to listen to everybody else's posts. I mean, if you expect people to listen to some two hour album, you need to listen to everybody else's posts. Oh, well, you know, that's not going to happen. But well, some so, albums are fantastic, like Chicago Greatest Hits. Or, oh, yeah, I have that album, actually. Or, you know, uh, or uh, Tom Jones. It's like one one great song after the other. Yeah. Well, we're about to get off of this hangout, but you know how some people are. They're, they want you to sit down and look at all of their vacation photos, which is not really that interesting because, you know, it's not your vacation. But you do it. You'll do it. You'll do it. But then you try to show them six months later your vacation photos. Oh, uh, they don't want to look at them because you ever, they're. You ever? Um, uh, it really bugs me when people are like that. You know what's annoying is people. If you type, let's say, a paragraph or two, asking a friend of yours a question or just making a statement, and you're expecting a reply, but instead of a reply in terms of text format you're getting an icon a thumbs up or a little and a little cute animation like and that's all all of a sudden that's all they send you like they won't like communicate with you they won't send you like yeah they're just giving you the brush off you know like they yeah, like, send you like a thumbs up a yeah, thumbs up or an animation you know they're giving you the brush off yeah that's like a, a form of elitism like either either I'm too lazy to type to you or it, it could be, it could be, but it could also be like it, you know, thumbs up is, is kind of saying like, you know, cool, man. You know? It's cool, right? But he, he's talking about people that are, are unresponsive, right? Like if some uh, somebody I know has a hobby similar to mine, they like reptiles, they like lizards, and I, I, they got a leopard gecko. So I, may, I I told them what I knew about leopard geckos. You know, not not a long story, a couple of paragraphs or three or two or three paragraphs, and I get, and I get, and then I get these two foxes, uh, you know, hugging each other, a little animation. <laughs> it's like, I didn't, you probably didn't read the paragraph. Um, like, say, say something, you know. Like, you probably didn't read the paragraph. I asked, <laughs> the, I asked them a question about the gecko. A I, lot of these people, they don't have the guts to communicate. And I don't want to get on a rant because we're going to get off, but they don't have the guts to communicate. See me, I'll just tell people, I'll say, look, and I had to put this on my Facebook profile. I am not chatty. All right. Because people have wanted to befriend me. And I talked about this in the past who I don't know these people, but I'm kind of friendly. I'm kind of a friendly person. So I try to talk to people and they'll say, oh, I love your beer reviews. And I'll say, well, I appreciate that. Fine. You can be my Facebook friend. That's fine. But then it goes into these long, open-ended conversations. And I'm saying, well, um, and you don't want to be rude, but I've tried to tell them in the past. I say, well, look, um, I don't really have time to talk about all these things, you know. Uh, and maybe they're lonely. They don't have too many friends. And they That's sit what Larry David says on Curb Your Enthusiasm. He hates the, the stop and greet. Come here, come here. Where are you going? Blah, 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 blah. He said, I can't be stopping and, and listening to people's stories every time somebody recognizes me. It's like, right. He doesn't want to hear the stop and chat. So that's the problem I had on Facebook. So I had to tell them, I say, look, I'm not the right person to talk to about these things because I'm not chatty. I'm not, I can't give good answers. So I'm giving you answers like, oh, okay. Or, man, how about that? I can't disagree. You know, because I don't know you, so I can't really engage in that because I don't really ever, I call it, I don't I don't ever chat people up. You know what I mean? I don't become friends on Facebook with people and say, hey, dude, what's up? What's up? And then talk to them for six hours straight. I, I just, I don't do that. You know, and that's not my, uh, that's not my bag. So I had to put that on my Facebook profile. It's at the very end. I am not chatty. 
especially when somebody uh, befriends you online and then all of a sudden they they give you a sob story and they hit you up for money. I said, I oh, yeah, you. That's, that's too obvious. You know, that's too obvious. But, uh, but, uh, but for them to be in the group like Alcohol Eggs or Rock and Roll Club and then we have a common, I call it a contact point, an interest in a hobby or something, that's fine. And we'll talk about it. And I'll say, uh, oh, I never had that beer be <laughs> before, but I would be curious to try it. But I do engage people to an extent, but you know, I don't believe in being rude. If somebody sends you a message, you respond. But some people are very uh, either rude, and you know, there are very rude people in the world, and oh, uh, they yeah. they don't have the guts to uh, say what they're thinking, and uh, and and that's really a a, a pet peeve of mine. Um, I, I don't stay friends with them very long. Uh, not you know, we use that term loosely. Um, because uh, rudeness, I just can't tolerate it. It drives me crazy. It's not, it's, it like, in other words, if you post what happened to your central air conditioner and somebody asks a simple question about your new central air conditioner and you gave them, hi de ho you gave them just a thumbs up symbol instead of answering. <laughs> like if they said, uh, I'm sorry your air conditioner broke. I hope it wasn't too expensive to get a new one. And you just gave a thumbs up. That's like you. Oh, you sent them like off. a smiley face. <laughs> yeah, you give them a brush off. I would say, uh, oh, thank you. It was $5,000 and it, that's a big payout, but it, it's working well. And uh, I tech, yeah. you know, you have to do that from time to time, pay for these things. So, but um, yeah, boy, I'll tell you what, social media is a treacherous thing. A little video. It's, it's a different. It's a different type of uh, communication, and it's very new. You know, um, it's all very new stuff. So yeah, it's, very new. it's all being worked out, and there's different generations too. Like you grew up in a generation where none of this stuff was around. No. And and you no. have a, you have um, maybe the generation. I think I'm I'm, uh, I'm considered a millennial. There's the next generation to sort of say like. My kids, I think, is Generation Z, where they grow up um, with uh, the oldest stuff, and and so communication for them is a different thing. Yeah, so they're 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 used to just giving a thumbs up and not having to show their their their, their faces or you know things like that. If this is why people walk around in public with their smartphones in front of their faces, even though they're right, 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 right. And, and and it's not to say that that's necessarily bad because I have my smartphone in front of my face right now and I'm talking to you guys so it's it's a very a new thing and it has to be worked out within the, I would say the next 10 years or 15 years or so it's a new technology and it affects communication very much so yes that's right well folks I agree with what you're saying well we're going to get off of this so thanks for watching this video production and we'll probably be back soon for another Fandango Friday any last uh, blowouts James, what, yeah. what, what, is, uh, what does Thing have to say? Let's, let's get him on you. No, no, don't put Thing on they, you. No, Thing's things uh, resting right now, but uh, because <laughs> oh what oh because nobody in the comments box said a word about Thing. Thing is a little upset. Right. Oh, sucker. <laughs> what? Fuck <laughs> yourself. All right, uh, uh, says okay. Music-wise, I've been listening to the new Iggy Pop and Sabation, and then Ron's a Miller guy says, Gabe, yeah, you wore, you wore that shirt like you worked for Miller. Ron, you sure are chatty in your live video examination. <laughs> I know who I am. I'm talking to myself in the audience, but I'm talking about these private, chitty, chatty things where, you know, I, it'd be like somebody randomly calling me from the phone book and saying, uh, Let's talk. I'd say, well, what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know who you are. Anyway, people who post everything, you would have for lunch, and you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. that I just ignore that. But I'm talking about these people. Want to I don't. Eat. I don't like the lunch stuff. I don't like what you had for dinner. And... No, I, I don't ever post stuff like that. How cute my grandchildren and my cat is. Oh, that's yeah. fine. I guess that's fine. But I'm um, like this air conditioner breaking. I never put that on Facebook. No one knew about it except you. I told y'all personally, but um. I didn't get on there talking about, oh, my air conditioner's broke. You should have said, I'm suffocating. I can't breathe. And so everybody could write, oh, I'm sorry, man. It's so hot. Sympathy icon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need all that. You, you, just, you just kind of mentioned it you know, on the side. 
I mentioned on Saturday, I'm not uh, into all that. Like, I am into self promotion in a sense that I have a video channel, right? So, but but not in that. I kind of like keep things private, you know. But anyway, um, thanks for watching this video production.